Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today for you I have a mighty game review of Arma 3. I'm not really going to talk very in-depth about Arma 3 itself because at this point there's multiple DLCs. There's a lot of different DLCs that adds different things, uh, showcase missions, etc. Instead, what I'm going to talk about is more or less what I feel thing. about the game, yeah. and I'm going to focus Point primarily on that. What's when it comes point? to like the storylining of the different campaigns and that, I'm going to be honest, I have almost 600 hours in the game, and I still have actually have not finished any of the campaigns in the game. Uh, close, but haven't finished any of it. Uh, and there's a lot of different information. You can get more information online through like the wiki pages and that to find out what the storylining is and generally speaking m the biggest part of my experience with this game in my over 600 hours of gameplay is not single player at all it's barely doing any missions it's mostly doing uh you know getting online with buddies and playing different types of missions or campaign scenarios etc that way uh, so when it comes to the stock armor game itself, with its missions, I'm not going to talk too much about them. Well, let's dive on in here. Let's start off with the developer and the publisher is Bohemia Interactive. Uh, the engine they use is Real Virtuality 4. I probably pronounced it wrong, but I believe that's what it is, or supposed to be. How about that? Uh, it was released on Windows September 12th. 2013 so this is an older game i know it's 2020 this game's been out for seven years i'm trying to give you a standpoint of how i feel about the game currently in 2020 uh it was released on mac os and lynx uh august 31st 2015 so even for mac and lynx it's been around for a while uh Chances of this ever going on console, I would say, is never going to happen. Maybe a, a very stripped down, cut down version of it, but I would say at this point, it's just never going to happen at this point. It is an open world, realism based tactical military shooter. Generally speaking, everything is military. You're either part of NATO forces or some other military around the world. It's really based on what mission you're doing and what type of mission you're doing. Uh, there's different types of liberation missions, dynamic civil war missions, etc. These are all different types of mods. I'm going to be talking a lot about mods here when it comes to doing this video. Um, but let's talk about what I like, what I felt kind of eh, neutral about that it could have been a little bit better. Uh, but it's not game breaking and more or less the stuff that I felt was absolutely negative. Uh, honestly, I feel the game actually still looks really great for its age. The game is the game is seven years old, um, and it to me it still looks really good. This is actually gameplay on standard graphics, folks. Everything's on standard. Uh, view distance, shadow, the whole nine yards. It's all on standard. Nothing is tweaked to high, which that's actually kind of an unfortunate part of itself. I'm gonna get to in a bit here. Uh, it sounds great mostly, and what I'm getting at there is, is well, some of the sounds probably could be better, but at least the sounds are generally speaking realistic and really helps immerse you into the game. You know, uh, if you're driving a vehicle, you can do things in a third person or first person stance. So when you're driving a vehicle, uh, your engine sound it sounds fairly realistic, but it also sounds muffled, like you're actually driving inside the vehicle. Uh, but when you're driving in third-person view, you don't actually have the same engine sound. It's louder because you're hearing it from the outside. And you'll get a little bit of that here as the footage rolls. Uh, shooting mechanics, generally speaking, it feels good, especially for a game that's seven years old, folks. Is it Escape from Tarkov when it comes to the infantry shooting mechanics? Hell no, Escape from Tarkov way outclasses this game at this point. Uh, but consider that the uh, Escape from Tarkov is a game, uh, another tactical shooter uh, that's many years newer than this and also has many more years of development at this point uh, than this has. And it's still getting a lot of updates and things like that to its engine, uh, to the way it handles the shooting mechanics to the way it handles range mechanics 
bullet mechanics, etc. This game did that before Tarkov did that, and it did a fairly good job. And even this many years later, it still feels really good. This feels better than Battlefield. This feels better than COD, folks. This actually feels better than a majority of the games out there on the market today. And, a, and like I said, once again, consider how old this game is. So it's it, they did actually a really good job, especially at the time. Um, and like like I said, even now, it's still a really good rendition to a more realistic paced shooting. Uh, the game, uh, I'm sorry, the driving, flying, etc. at all, it feels fairly good. Like, you know, when I drive a tank, it feels like I'm, for the most part, driving a tank. There is some issues in the mechanics there. Uh, I'll dive into that here in a bit as well. Uh, but, you know, driving a tank, generally I feel like I'm driving a tank. If I'm driving an amphibious vehicle on land versus an amphibious vehicle in water, you know, they both feel different even if it's the same vehicle, which would be a more realistic approach. Obviously, if you're in water trying to do an amphibious landing, that vehicle obviously isn't moving as fast. It's not steering as fast. It feels more like a boat versus an agile military vehicle. And then when you're driving on land, it feels a lot better, obviously. Um, also, driving a car versus, say, driving a tank feels completely different. And then driving a tank, it, you know, up until the engine decides to crap out, not the engine, the tank, the game engine decides to crap out, it feels really good, it feels powerful, it feels like you're more or less really driving a tank. Uh, flying, I'm not going to touch too much base with because I don't do a lot of flying. I'm actually still kind of learning how to do flying for the most part. It's something that never really interested me. And it's just something I've been kind of flirting with in virtual reality. But generally, it feels pretty good. That, that You know, there's multiple different types of helicopters in the game. And each helicopter feels a little different in its own way. Uh, I actually like flying around the... Uh, I think it's called the Hurion, or Harion. I think it's Hurion, the CH-67. I like actually flying that over the, uh, I believe it's OH-9. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a little bird. It's an Osprey. Or sorry, not an Osprey, a, a little bird. Um, the game is uh, fairly simple to mod. Uh, and that's the, that's like the big thing with this game is mods. You know, going back on mods here. How do I want to put this? Playing, playing a game, playing this game without mods is like paying for a prostitute to do your laundry. And that's, you know, it's that simple. Sure, you could pay the prostitute to do your laundry, but there's other things that are more fun to do. Um, the base missions, generally speaking, while I haven't done all of them, and I haven't really experimented with all of them, feels pretty good for the most part. They they got good voice acting, good storylining, etc. Uh, they definitely put you into combat. They definitely explain things, etc. Uh, the map system, you know, they use the map system and everything else. It's it just feels generally really good. Um, the uh, next thing too is is, is the uh, it's got amazing mod support, folks. Uh, if you make your own mods or if you want to get your own mods, etc., uh, this game really has it all. They they got it kind of co-opt with the Steam Workshop and everything else, so it's easy to download the mods. All you have to do is subscribe to them. And also, if you make your own mods, it's a lot easier to upload them to the Steam Workshop. Uh, they've done a really good job on that end. Arma's done a lot of different stuff. They've released, like, the Zeus Editor and the, there's the Eden Creator. Uh, they're actually now doing DLCs. One is the Global Mobilization DLC, which is it's a creator DLC that do different types of missions and more like a Cold War-type period setting. Uh, and they're actually getting ready to do, I think the next one is Iron Curtain, which is scheduled for 2021. I believe it's actually early 2021. And it's another creation engine DLC. 
uh, that you can, sorry, not creation engine, but it's another creator DLC to do different types of missions and etc. cetera with. Uh, and while I don't typically bring this up, uh, while I don't typically bring, while I don't typically bring this up during reviews, I feel that it is necessary here because honestly, if you're going to buy this game, the only way I feel that people more often than not, people are going to play this game online. And, uh, the game has an on, an amazing online community. I haven't feel found anybody that was, I have found people that was difficult to work with and etc. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, most people are very good. The, the community in general is really good. Uh, they're really helpful towards people. They're willing to teach people how to play the game. You know, it's a community that when they see a new player, they don't try to shit on that new player right away. They try to help them out and try to teach them the game because, uh, to be honest, even when I was a new player versus now, uh, the game is very complex and it's very hard to pick up on the different things. And honestly, the tutorial system that they have in the game itself is very lackluster and there's going to be a lot of moments there where you're going to need to ask hey how the hell do i do this and uh, someone can tell you how to do it and they're willing to tell you how to do it and willing to tell you how to do, do different things uh they're willing to recommend you different types of mods willing to teach you how to do different things i mean i haven't asked anyone to teach me how to fly helicopters or jets it's been something i've been experimenting with myself but I do know people that are willing to go as far as just teaching people how to fly helicopters and jets and how to use drones, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. I've learned through people how to do like the artillery system and how to you set up crew served weapons and just different kinds of assets. And I've been learning, it took me a while, but I've been learning more and more essentially how to use support, support of AI uh, in different ways, you know, so there's a great community out there. There's a community out there. They'll teach you how to mod, even how to make your own difference, different missions and mods and etc. So there's, there's a very huge community for this game. That's really good. Really helpful. Um, I really can't say enough about the community. And I, that is, I feel a very important part about this game, especially because it's so, what's this thing you gotta do? It's so built around using different types of mods, and that's all going to be a part of it. Uh, the now, when it comes to using the editor and even using Zeus, it's very complex, uh, very pretty hard to learn. But it makes some great missions, and uh, you can make some great maps with the game and different types of mods with the game. So while it's very hard to use, very hard to learn. It's probably some of the more harder stuff to learn and use. Uh, there is some guides out there to teach you how to use the different stuff. But the important thing is, is you can do just about every single thing you can imagine. You want to tell um, me what we're doing? Okay, now these are the parts of the, of the I feel, that are, are kind of a neutral. Life is strange. Honest What's opinion, mods My are a point? must. Now, even if you're not going to play this online with a bunch of buddies, uh, you definitely should go through the community of mods because there's some things that Bohemian Interactive really didn't add this in this game. Like, uh, one thing is, is uh, like, you can't climb over walls with the base game without mods. And then there's, there's actually a... Uh, mod called enhanced movement that allows you to climb up over walls with a key bind uh we're talking lower walls you know walls i'd be able to reach up and grab uh you know the, the, the stamina system in the game really is not very good the weapon sway system weapon sway is not really all that good either um so you know once again that's all mod stuff just to improve the game. Uh, another mod too is the Splendid Smoke. It makes the smoke look better, last longer. It makes the smoke essentially more realistic. So I feel that even if you're not gonna play this game online, 
Those type of mods are almost a must. I know there's some people that feel like Ace is a must. I'm not a fan of Ace. Uh, generally speaking, when it comes to doing anything with Ace, I avoid Ace. But even Ace opens up opportunities such as Ace. With Ace, you can have things and set things up like Breach and Charges. You can set up a more realistic medical system, etc. The game is very complex to learn, and it doesn't really do a very good job teaching it to you. Um, the the tutorials are they're not really the best. And that being said, now the reason this is a neutral uh, is just because yes, the game is extremely complex. There's a lot to learn, but there's a lot here. Understand that this is not just infantry. This is infantry, this is tanks, this is helicopters, it's artillery. Uh, there's Navy type stuff, so, such as ships and boats and landing craft. Um, so this is like the whole combined arms experience, the whole military experience when it comes to doing missions and contracts. You can have, you know, Halo dropping, you know, Halo dropping in as a Delta team. And uh, we, we've, I've done missions already where we're, jumping out of helicopters in the water and swimming to shorelines to set up demolitions at an enemy military base, stuff like that. Sniping enemies from from 1,200 meters out. So it's a, you know, it's a complex game to learn, but if you stick with it and if you really uh, commit yourself to it and learn the game, it's actually a lot of fun and it's really Flying is extremely difficult with a keyboard and mouse. I find it actually to be horrendous with a keyboard and mouse. I'm still working on a control uh, control schematic. I'm using an Xbox controller for learning to use it to fly helicopters and stuff like that. And, but I've talked to a lot of people when it comes to flying and almost everyone that actually flies on a regular basis, from my experience, from what people are telling me, they're using either a joystick or they're using a, uh, a controller to fly, with most of them using joysticks more often than not. Uh, the different types of animations, personally, I feel are lackluster. Like I said earlier about smoke is pretty lackluster. Uh, and of course, you can kind of get around that with a mod. Reload animations, I feel are, for the most part, they're generally pretty good. The problem I have is, is they're not really advanced. Uh, so there's not a different reload animation for, say, if you have a round in the chamber of your rifle versus if you don't have a round in your chamber, such as a full empty magazine or like a tactical reload, if you will. Uh, and that's that's something more modern games has. And I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I would suspect that if there's ever an arm before... That's going to be something they'll probably have, but this game does not have that. And that being said, once again, it's 2013. That wasn't something people was really after, necessarily cared about. And there's a lot of other stuff going on in the game that is kind of like one of those scenes of, eh, you know, it kind of sucks, but it's not, it's not deal breaking in my opinion. Um, some weapon sounds, engine sounds, etc., are lackluster as well. Uh, once again, you know, 2013, I guess what can you expect? It's not, once again, it's not deal breaker. It's just one of those things I wish it was better. And then once again, there's mods to improve that kind of stuff. Generally speaking, the stock arm of sounds, it's there. And some of the different weapon sounds, it's there through mods and etc. vehicles. Uh, it's all acceptable for the most part. Okay, now these are the parts that I feel is just absolutely, like, this just sucks. Uh, the impact mechanics when driving are glitchy. Oh, man, it'd be nothing to be driving a tank, 60-ton tank, clip a tree branch, and suddenly my tank goes flying across the map. I mean, that is just, it is, that is horrible. That is horrid. And even to this day, that there's, there still has not been a solution to fixing that problem. Uh, and there is some people out there that are working on mods to fix that because, well, here it is. It's seven years later and Bohemia really hasn't worked on that. I don't know if it's been improved over the last seven years. 
I can tell you over the last two years, it has not been improved. Uh, I've actually had this game for two years now, and I'm finally getting around to do a, a, a um, review presentation on it. And uh, yeah, driving, driving is really glitchy. Flying can be really glitchy. Uh, slane loading objects and vehicles and etc. It all can be really glitchy. Unloading vehicles from assault boats, it's all really glitchy. It's all really glitchy, and it's because the engine is just the game engine itself. When it comes to that kind of stuff, is honestly just garbage. Um, and at this point, I don't think there's anything that can be done about it. You know, without like completely redoing the whole game. And that being said, I don't think uh, don't think we're going to be seeing that kind of work in Arma 3 anytime soon. Even though there is new content and different types of stuff coming out for the game. Uh, optimization really isn't all that good. I get a lot of FPS drops when it comes to Arma 3. Uh, when I'm run when there's really nothing going on, I have no problem rocking out 60 FPS on everything being set to standard, but. When there's a lot going on, my God, my, I've seen single digit FPS already when it comes to this game. It is definitely a game that requires a very beefy computer. I consider my computer to be a quite beefy gaming computer. And I'm gonna be honest, folks, it's not beefy enough to really drive Arma. And honestly, unless you got some kind of supercomputer, yeah, this game will bog your PC down, uh, no matter what. Now, I mean, I guess you could say the optimization is fairly good. Consider right now that it's rendering. I couldn't even guess how many meters of terrain you're seeing right now on the screen. Uh, I, I bet you you're probably seeing close to 4,000 meters worth of terrain. Uh, plus you have, you know, the enemy AI, friendly AI what you're doing, what they're doing, uh, different kinds of things like that. So maybe the optimization is really good. It's just not a very stable game. How about that? Um, AI in general, I feel pretty crap. Uh, I feel there, there needs to be a lot of improvements to the AI, and that's something that just needs to be worked on in the game in general. There, Oh, my God, I'm going to say it again. There's mods out there to help help improve the AI. Uh, so I do recommend those mods, folks. If you want better, more advanced AI, uh, you want to definitely look at the mods in the workshop. Con controls in general is is not very ergonomic. I mean, the controls are really all over the place for this game. And basically, you need half your keyboard, probably three quarters of your keyboard, your mouse... Plus, you need your shift, your control, and your alt keys because some of your key binds are going to be hold control plus R to do this. Hold control plus G to do this. Uh, the controls are just all over the place. Not very ergonomic whatsoever. Um, and that's actually the hard part about mastering controls. And even now, I still fumble with the controls at times myself. So it just goes to show that it's the controls are not really all that good for this game, which is also one reason you probably will never see this game on on a console port because it's just, you know, the controls are all over the place. You need a ton of buttons. And you almost kind of expect that, to be honest, with, with the scope of the game. So while it's bad that the controls are so complex and not very ergonomic, for what the game is, you kind of expect that kind of thing. Like I said, it's a it's a combined arms military simulator. And, and well, I wouldn't say simulator. It's not really a true simulator per se, but it's it's pretty damn close. Uh, game really is not friendly to new players whatsoever, uh, and that's mostly got to do with the fact that the controls are so complex. And that honestly, the uh, the tutorials really aren't that good, to be honest. So it's that end kind of sucks. It's just not friendly for new players. Um, it's not the most stable game. I've already talked about that. You know, really be like I said. I got a really beefy computer. And it, it, it does. Uh, it does. 
have issues, performance issues. Uh, the end the game engine is really clunky, to be honest. Uh, and, and it can get really choppy at times. You know, there's it's an old engine. It needs to be put out to the pasture. It needs to be taken out by the tool shed shot, folks. Uh, we need a whole new engine for Arma 3, and hopefully, from what I understand, they're actually supposedly working on one for Arma 4. It definitely does need it. Now, all that being said, folks, what I'm going to dive into here now is the price tag of the game, and if I feel it's really worth it. And honestly, yes, I feel it's actually worth it, but I would only grab this game on sale. Let me dive into why here, and that, uh, same way with the DLCs. The, there's so many DLCs for this game. You really don't need the DLCs. You really need what's going to interest you. You mean the uh, Personally, I recommend the Apex Edition. Now, the Apex Edition is around seventy-six bucks. It's about eighty dollars. You get Arma Three. You get carts. You get helicopters. You get marksmen, and you get Apex. Um, I feel this is the best way to get the game. But honestly, I would wait for a sale. The game goes on sale quite often. And you could actually pick up the Apex no, Edition from anywhere from twenty to thirty dollars, and I find it more often than not for sale for twenty bucks. Come on, that's honestly a really that. good price for how much you're getting. And, and, and then uh, personally, I recommend also the Tanks DLC, because basically most of the time you're going to probably be doing something in some type of land-based vehicle in one way or another. I mean, yes, there is air-type vehicles, but you're always going to need to, ha to have that need for some type of tank or light vehicle, whatever, to drive across the map. And the main thing is, is you want to tell me if you doing? don't have the DLCs, it doesn't really kind of block you lately. off from that yeah. kind of stuff. Life is strange. I mean, if What's I remember point? correctly, I couldn't fly the Hurion without the helicopters DLC, but that didn't really matter to me because at the time I wasn't flying, but I could still ride in the helicopter, no problem. So that's not a problem. Uh, when it comes to the Tanks DLC, why well, I've always had the Tanks DLC. I was really a true, legit tanker in the United States Army. And, you know, basically right right away, it's like, well, if I'm getting armor, then I'm getting tanks. That's simple. Uh, there's also there's the Jets DLC. But for the most part, if you get Apex, uh, Arma 3 Apex Edition, and you get the Tanks DLC, that covers up a good chunk of the, of the stuff that you're going to want and going to need. I uh, mean, like, Apex Edition has some of the really good sniper scopes for sniper rifles. It has one of the best sniper rifles in the game, which is the M320. Or the, uh, it's an intervention, is what it is. If people are fam still familiar with the intervention, the uh, 408. Um, it's got some machine guns. It, the big thing that's got in there is uh, it's got a set of night vision optics, night vision uh, goggles. That actually also has thermal vision to it, so it's not just night vision. Uh, and I find those to be extremely useful. And the scopes, a lot there's scopes in there that has uh, night vision as well as thermal vision. So once again, very useful items, uh, different types of suppressors, ghillie suits, etc. It's got a lot of Apex is a lot of useful stuff, and so does Marksman as well. Anyway, folks. This was a very long review, but it is a very big game to review. And there's a lot of stuff I want to put out there for Arma 3. Anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Thank you very much for tuning in, and hopefully you have yourself a great day.